Hi folks, my name is Rich Markley. I'm a product manager for Rota and Schwartz here in North America. And today we're going to talk to you about five oscilloscope tips. One of the things you want to avoid is having the signal too small on the display. If the signal's too small on the display, you're not using the full range of the analog to digital converter, and you're not going to get as good of measurements as you could. The other thing that you want to avoid is clipping the signal. Clipping the signal means that you have driven it off of the display. You can see that it's indicated down here by the little red arrows. Um, another drawback to that is you can actually overdrive the front end of the oscilloscope, which can also impact your measurements. So what we typically recommend is you want to put the signal where you get the entire signal on the display without clipping it. And so to do that, what you may end up doing is using the fine mode or the vernier mode, and you're gonna adjust the signal until you're within one or maybe even half of a division on the display itself. Tip number two is to make sure that you have your probes properly compensated. Probe compensation is adapting the probe to your oscilloscope. And to do that, we're gonna use the built-in probe compensation on the scope itself. One of the first things I typically do is I remove the witch's cap, and then I go ahead and find the spot on the scope where you do the compensation. For this scope, it's got a really nice built-in capability to use the shortest ground lead possible that you can see right there. And so we'll go ahead and now step into the actual probe compensation menu. To get to that, we'll go under channel one, scroll up to probe, probe adjust. And now we're gonna tell it we wanna work on channel one to start with. And you can see here, this looks really good. So we've got a nice square wave and that's exactly what we want. If that didn't look good, what we would do is we would come in and use the little screwdriver that came with the probe and we would adjust that to get a nice square wave. And if you look here on the display, it actually tells you when you're sitting pretty well. Um, so right now we're perfectly in the green area there. So that was a low frequency adjustment. Now let's go do the high frequency adjustment. The high frequency adjustment is part of this, the probe body right here. We're going to adjust that. And what we wanna do here is get the fastest rise time possible. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go in and adjust these pots to make that look a little bit better. And then let's see if we can get the fastest rise time that we can. And again, we're looking to get it kind of in that green area. We're gonna play around with it until we get it about right where we want it. So that looks really good. Again, adjusting the probe compensation, so adapting the probe to the oscilloscope that you're working with is very important as that can impact all sorts of different measurements um, from volts peak to peak if you have overshoot to rise time measurements. Um, making sure that you have the probe properly adjusted is very important. And tip number three, we're gonna focus on auto versus normal trigger. And so what we have right now, you can see we have essentially an unstable trigger. And what I've set up is a very infrequent pulse. It's happening about one time per second. And so the scope is not syncing on that right now. And what's happening is the scope's just auto triggering and throwing up the waveform and we're not getting a stable waveform or a stable trigger. And that's why you see this bouncing all around. This is where the normal trigger becomes very, very handy. So if I come in now and I turn on normal trigger, you'll see that now we have triggered on a very stable rising edge. And the only time that the oscilloscope is going to trigger, which you can see by the little trigger indication right here, is when it actually sees a valid trigger for whatever trigger condition I've set up. And tip number four, we're gonna talk about documentation. How to save off a screenshot, how to save off data. Most oscilloscopes are gonna have some sort of quick save function. Um, on this oscilloscope, it's this little camera button. You also have the save and load menu or button that will often be available there that you can go into. And so one of the first things that you're gonna wanna do is take your thumb drive and you're gonna put the thumb drive into whatever USB port that you have available. So in this case, we can save waveforms, we can save setups, we can save screenshots. One of the neat pieces about this oscilloscope as well is this one touch. And so when I turn one touch on, I can enable that and I can tell it I want it to save all of these different things. So the reference waveforms, the screenshot, the CSV file, the setup. And when I hit the save button, it will go ahead and save all of that now to that thumb drive. So that makes it very simple for documentation to be able to send off to someone else or to put into your lab notebook. And tip number five, we're gonna talk about serial decoding and triggering. 
So if you look, of course, you have your ones and zeros in the packet or the message, the frame that's being sent across the display. That can be difficult to decode on your own. So if you have an oscilloscope that's protocol aware and can do that, that makes it significantly easier. So in this case, I've already set up our UART bus. You can see that I have it doing ASCII decoding down below. And so this allows us to have the oscilloscope decode for us what's happening on the bus versus us having to count ones and zeros and trying to decode it ourselves. In addition, it also gives you protocol aware triggering. So if I go into the trigger menu now, instead of triggering on an edge, I can go to serial bus and I can now define the exact type of serial trigger that I wanna do. And that'll be specific to the type of serial bus that you've set up on the oscilloscope. Thanks so much for taking time to listen to and watch our five oscilloscope tips. If you have a tip that we didn't mention, let us know.